In this video, I will explain in detail and as clear as is possible how to properly install and play Bloodborne in your PC. I recommend you to watch the entire video so you don't miss any important detail about the process of installation and the limitations you might need to consider when playing the game. First, you need to get all the following files, the game, the emulator and some mods that will help you to run the game with a more consistent performance, avoiding crashes and visual glitches. In the description, you will find all the links you need. The most important and most difficult item to obtain is the game itself. This will be the only file that you will need to look for by yourself, but I'm pretty sure that if you have been playing on PC for a while, you already know what to do. The game will be divided into two main files, the full game which is about 30 gigabytes, and the patch 109 that is only 170 megabytes. You can use the complete edition or the game of the year edition, both of them work perfectly fine. In my case, I'm gonna be running the game of the year edition. The emulator Shad PS4 has two versions, the optimized version for Bloodborne, which is the one I prefer despite it has been discontinued and doesn't exist in GitHub anymore, and the current or official version which will be getting constant updates, fixing different bugs and issues within the game, but at the same time being slightly less stable than the Bloodborne optimized version. I will be using the Bloodborne optimized Shad PS4 cause it works pretty well for me, but you might want to test the other version as well to see which one is better for you. If that is the case, you will notice that in the download page there will be multiple options, just choose the one designed for your operative system and that is tag QT, otherwise you won't be able to run it properly. Once you have obtained all the files I previously mentioned, it's time to extract the emulator. Right click the compressed file and extract it to its own folder. Otherwise, you will have all the files spread around your desk. If you want, you can rename the folder to make it easier to spot. As you can see, it's a regular folder with multiple files that make the program work. Shad PS4 application file is the one we are going to run. Be sure to run it as administrator. This will prevent your PC from blocking the emulator when you try to launch it. It's okay if you get a pop warning. You can ignore it and tell your PC to run the program. The first time you open Shad PS4, it will ask you for the location where you want to install games and DLCs. I recommend you to choose the same location for both options. Just be sure to choose a road that you will easily remind, because we are going to open it multiple times. Now that we are inside the emulator, we have to install the game. In order to do that, click on File, select Install Package Files, and look for your Bloodborne files. Be sure to install the bigger file, which is the base game in its 1.0 version. The emulator will ask you to confirm the location you previously chose to install the game. If it's correct, click on OK, and the program will begin to install Bloodborne on your system. The installation speed may vary depending on your PC, so be patient if you feel the process is being slow. Once it's finished, just click OK and you will notice Bloodborne is there, but if you remember, we installed the base game on its 1.0 version. So now we have to install the patch 109 to be able to play the latest version of the game including its DLC. Then we have to repeat the process and click Files, then Install Package and now we are going to select the patch 109 file which is about 170 megabytes. The emulator will immediately detect it as an update patch, click Yes and wait until it finishes. Now you will see that the game has been successfully updated to the patch 109, which means you have done everything correctly. If your game is not updated, this means your files are not compatible with each other, so you might need to try again or look for the correct files for your version of the game. For instance, if your base game file is the game of the year edition and your patch file is for the complete edition, it's not gonna work. Both files need to be paired with their corresponding version. Once you have successfully installed and patched your game, right click on Bloodborne and look for the cheats and patch option. Click on the patch tab and select the Shad PS4 repository which is the most complete available. Then click Download Patch. This will unlock a ton of multiple options to customize the game to run better with your PC. I recommend you to copy my settings, but feel free to experiment. Mark Disable Chromatic Aberration and Motion Blur. If you have a powerful PC, you will be able to run the game at 60 FPS, otherwise mark 30 FPS option. This in order to maintain a consistent performance while playing. Mark Force Enable Old Hunters DLC to be able to play it. And finally, you can decide at which resolution you want to run the game. By default, it will be 1080p, but you can lower or increase the resolution depending on your PC. In my case, I also tried to play at 1440p, but at this point you will be crashing each 20 minutes, which I find really annoying since the game is not as easy as Elden Ring. For reference, I'm running an RTX 4080 Super with a Ryzen 9 7950X 3D, so unless you got a 4090, do not try to run it at 4K, cause it will be completely unplayable. But I'm pretty sure the majority of systems will be able to play at 1080p without major issues. Then click save and close the window. Now we need to make some minor tweaks to the emulator itself to prevent issues when playing. Click on settings, then configuration, in the general tab, mark enable full screen, then go to the graphics tab and make sure the emulator is using your dedicated GPU, otherwise the performance you'll get will be completely stupid. If you remember, I am using the Bloodborne optimized emulator, so you don't need to touch anything else, but in case you want to use the official version to get the most recent updates and fixes, you will need to go back to the general tab and decide which update channel you want to run. The nightly version will give you daily updates 
updates, but you might face new issues as well. On the other hand, the release version should be the most consistent and the one I would choose if I wasn't running the Bloodborne optimized Shad PS4. Eventually, the official version will be the best option, but for now, personally, I will stick to the one I'm using just because it's not getting updated anymore and it's working fine, but I will be swapping to the official version as soon as it fixes the crashes on highest resolutions, and technically after this we should be able to run the game perfectly fine, but unfortunately that is not the case. The game at the moment has two major issues, it crashes as soon as you start playing and it shows pretty weird artifacts, thankfully we can fix that with a few mods. It doesn't matter which version of the emulator we are using, the mods we will use and the process to install them will be the same for both cases. If you have a powerful PC you will need only three mods, the Bloodborne SFXR Visual FX Restoration 3.9 or Bloodborne PC SFX Fix that will prevent the game from crashing. Both mods do basically the same thing, so feel free to use the one you find more stable. I prefer the first one. We need Vertex Explosion Fix that will almost entirely delete the craziest visual glitches of the game. And finally, the Reduce Physics that aims to increase the performance by reducing the spikes of RAM usage caused by cloth physics. This one has three levels. I am using the one that doesn't affect the physics at all, but demands more resources. In the same way, feel free to choose the one that works better with your system. In case you have a PC that struggles to run the game smoothly, even with these mods applied, you will need the Bloodborne Visual Tweaks. This one will remove a lot of unnecessary visual elements, dramatically increasing the performance of your game. If you don't care too much about secondary visual elements on the environment, this mod will change your life and I can guarantee you that you will notice an insane difference on performance when this mod is active. I don't use this mod because I'm a little bit fussy with the graphics on my games, but sometimes, even with my hardware, I notice some stutter or lag that is not pretty enjoyable. To easily install all these mods, extract all of them and follow these steps. From the FPS boost, take the map folder to your desk. From the vertex explosion fix, take the parts folder out from DVD root PS4 to your desk. From the physic mod, take the MTD folder to your desk as well. Then cut these three folders to the SFXR folder and paste all of them inside the DVD root PS4 folder. And now cut the DVD root PS4 folder with all the mods inside of it and go to the folder where Shad PS4 installed the game. There you will find a folder named CUSA03173. Open it and paste the DVD root PS4 folder there. You will notice that there is a folder with the same name in that location, so be sure to click on replace when the warning shows up and wait until the mods are installed. Finally, go back to the Shad PS4 folder, execute the emulator and run the game. Now you can successfully play Bloodborne on your PC. At the moment you can play only with a controller, but it's not a big deal. You will get used to it and eventually there will be mods that will allow you to play with mouse and keyboard. Be aware that at the moment you cannot customize your character, so you have to play with the default character design that the game has to offer. Also, it's pretty normal if the game crashes sometimes as the emulator is in a very early stage. It will not be that frequent, so you can't complete the entire game without any troubles besides of the game difficulty itself. If your game crashes and you have no sound when you restart, just run the game again, exit to the main menu properly, close the emulator and restart once again. This way you will fix that minor problem. Let me know in the comment section what do you think of this amazing game. I am very happy to be able to play it after a lot of years of waiting for it. The people that dedicate hours of their lives to let us filthy casuals enjoy such games are literal heroes. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to my channel. Have a great day guys, my name is Carlos and I'll see you in the next one.